بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام تلك آيات الكتاب المبين إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن So we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that for Allah is the Mashriq and the Maghrib, the East and the West. And so for Aynama to Wallu, whichever way you face, Fathamma Wajhullah. There you find the face of Allah. In Allah Okay, now, um, here because they were prevented from praying in the Masajid, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentioned that the whole of the world okay, is Allah's and therefore they were not restricted from the rest of the world. The Prophet ﷺ mentions in a hadith that uh, out of the bounties and out of the favors that he was given from amongst the Anbiya, okay, one of them was that he says, وَجُعِلَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضُ Masjidan wa tahura. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me a favor or a bounty which he did not give any previous anbiya. And that was that he made the whole of the entire earth a masjid. Okay, he made it a masjid. The whole of the earth is a place where you can pray your salah. <coughs> and a tahura and a place which is the earth is something which can be used to purify oneself, which is the issue of Tayammu, okay, which will come later on in the Quran, inshallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exclusively gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam okay, this favor. Now, this meant that the previous Anbiya, okay, they had to pray the Ibadah, okay, whatever worship that they would do, they had to pray in the places of their worship. So the Jews and the Christians, okay, whether it's the synagogues, whether it's the churches, okay, their ibadah was restricted to their places of worship. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made for this ummah that they could pray salah anywhere. Now, they can pray salah anywhere. First of all, why is it called masjid? Why do you think the mosques are called masjid? Does anyone know? Yes, sister? Okay, mashallah. Sister said it. She knows the Arabic. So those who know Arabic will understand that this is ismul darf. Okay? Ismul darf meaning a name of something in which something happens or the name of something the time as something happens so we call the masjid a place where such that takes place now the question is why don't we call it marka place where ruku takes place or maqam place where qiyam takes place so why do you have to call it masjid for? Yeah. Is it because the, um, the new sister has been, it shows total submission? Okay, yeah, that's the, the important point he's, he just made there, and us. Which is that, out of all of the acts of salah, which of the acts of salah truly and absolutely shows that a person is submitting himself to Allah? Or in other words, which of these acts shows us that a person is a believer? It's the sajda, isn't it? 
That's the one thing that the Muslims in the entire world are recognized by nowadays. Okay, whether it's on an advertisement, or whether it's on a, you know, on any kind of film or something, or a cartoon. Whenever you see someone doing such that, where does your mind go? Towards the believers. Okay, so this is something which the believers are known by. And because through the, 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 the sajda, a, plus, a person is the closest with his Lord. Why is he closest with his Lord in his sajda? Why is he not closest with his Lord in his ruku? It's the place where it's position that where you have to humble yourself most. Humble. Okay, this is very important to understand. And I, 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 we kind of feel nowadays that we've lost touch okay, with that kind of humbleness. Although practically we're doing it, okay, we're doing the sajda, but in reality, the humbleness that a Muslim should have inside of himself okay, is something which unfortunately we've lost inside of ourselves. Right? And we've restricted humbleness to salat. We only show Allah Ta'ala humbleness when we are in our salat. And the Prophet has said that a person, whoever humbles himself for Allah, Okay, man tawada alillah, whoever humbles himself for Allah, rafa'ahu Allah. Allah will raise him. Okay, I mean, uh, it doesn't mean that person does such that it's not flying in the sky and be raised like that, no. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world and in the akhirah, Allah will give him, okay, high status. And subhanallah, uh, Umar radiallahu anhu, he... You know, he brought all of this or crystallized this this meaning in a in, in a famous saying that he said, which is that one day when he was traveling, okay, towards Al Quds, he was going towards Quds, Jerusalem, to take the keys of the city, to receive, okay, the keys of the city. He was with his servant on a journey, so he was on the journey, and they came to an area where there was lots of mud. So he, he got down and he removed his, his footwear and he began to walk in the mud. So as soon as he began to walk in the mud, his servant said that if you wished, you can sit on top of the camel. It's no problem with me. You can sit on the camel. So he said that he became angry. And he said to him, لَقَدْ كُنَّا أَذِ اللَّهِ Okay, he goes, listen. He goes, before we were a disgraced people. We, the Arabs, okay, we were a disgraced people. Before Islam, we were disgraced. لَقَدْ كُنَّا أَذِ اللَّهِ فَعَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ Allah gave us honor, Allah gave us respect, Allah gave us izza through Islam. فَإِنِ ابْتَغَيْنَ الْعِزَّةَ فِي غَيْرِ الْإِسْلَامِ and if we think that we can get Izza in something else than Islam, Allah will indeed make us humiliated. Allah will debase us. Allah will humiliate us. Allah. And that is a very important concept for every single one of us to understand. Okay? Because these matters, because these issues, these are things which are preventing us from really humbling ourselves today. Because we think that a humble person, he is the weakest of the society. That kind of macho-ness, okay, that coolness. And today that's what the media shows us today. Humbling yourself is not going to get you anywhere in society. Making yourself meek isn't going to get you anywhere. All right? These are fairy tales. That's what, that's what they pro portray to us. It's being strong, having the best body, okay, having your head up high. Okay, these are things which today the West considers to be honor and izza. But Allah has placed honor and izza in lowering yourself. Okay, so that's something for us to think about nowadays. The Prophet said that whoever humbles himself for Allah, Allah will raise him. And he said the opposite as well, that whoever man takabbara lillah, Whoever has arrogance, uh, whoever has arrogance, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will humiliate. Okay, so may Allah save us from this, may Allah bring us 
bring into our hearts the true reality of humility and humbling ourselves. And I mean, if we truly practice Islam, we will become more humble people. Right? I mean, pray our salat, we humble ourselves to Allah, humble ourselves to our parents, humble ourselves to our brothers, okay, to our sisters, to our friends, neighbors. Now, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقُ وَالْمَغْرِبُ فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Here the Mufassirin have mentioned two opinions okay, regarding this verse. فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا Whichever way uh, you face, there is the, way, the, the face of Allah. فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا This can either mean wherever <coughs> you are in the earth, wherever you are in the earth, okay, there you'll find Allah. Meaning it's not necessary that you are in a masjid or a place of worship. Okay, it's not necessary that I have to be in a place of worship if my ibadah is to be accepted. Allah will accept your ibadah if you are on the top of a mountain, Allah will accept your ibadah. If you are in uh, you know, the east, Allah will accept your ibadah. If you are in the west, Allah will accept If you are in the middle of a jungle, Allah will accept your ibadah. Okay, why? Because the whole of the east and the west is for Allah. And the Prophet has said that Allah has made the entire earth a place for us to worship Allah, to do something to Allah. That's one opinion. The second opinion is that this verse means that فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا Whichever way you face, in whichever direction you face, whether it's you facing towards the east, whether it's you facing towards the west, all of this is for Allah. Okay? Now, the first opinion, okay, you understood that. What about the second opinion? What does this mean? Can you face it? Any direction? For example, if you're paying the airplane, because it's like Salah. Okay, so those are some rulings, but what I'm trying to, uh, to, to ask is, regarding the Sahaba, what, what kind of, well, how did the Sahaba understand this? How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to the Sahaba, related to this incident, bear in mind, this incident, how does this fit in there? That whichever way you face, there, there's Allah. Okay, and, and, and it's linked more towards the the, the, the the Jewish claim. Okay, the claim that the Jews of Medina made. Okay, that um, when they change the direction of the. Okay, the, that's that's the issue, got it. Which is that because the Jews were throwing in the hearts of the believers all of these doubts, which is that your, your prophet he used to pray to Baitul Maqdis. Now he's praying towards the Kaaba. Tomorrow we don't know where he's going to face. So some of the believers, okay, this would have brought doubts inside of them. Just as today, okay, when the media, they bring up a certain issue on the news regarding Muslims in certain countries, <coughs> and some of the Muslims will feel kind of guilt inside of them, will find, find a, feel a kind of weakness inside of them, will try to justify it, okay, try to justify So these are things which naturally humans feel. And if you're a Muslim and these kind of ma'as are put forward, then you will feel this. Okay, sometimes even the strongest of the believers will feel something in their hearts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reassuring them, saying that it's not the direction which is the purpose. The purpose of facing towards the direction, that is not the purpose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set the qibla. Okay? So this is something which clears all those doubts that it's up to Allah for Allah is the Mashriq and for Allah is the Maghrib so If he says to you to face towards Bayt al-Maqdas okay, then you obey that because the whole of the East and West is for Allah and if he says to you tomorrow to face towards the Kaaba then this is a command from Allah whichever way he tells you then you obey Why? Because all of this is for Allah